The last thing that we're going to talk about in terms of understanding control systems is uh, what we would really like to describe these black box systems is as well as just knowing the names of the important variables, we would like to have some kind of mathematical shorthand to describe them. We don't always want to have to solve uh, massively complicated mathematical equations or write huge amounts of really complicated code to simulate a simple system when some of that uh, degree of complexity isn't needed. So the purpose of all of these next series of lectures is how do we deal with um, abstracting complexity, simplifying things down so that we can deal with them in a real world way and it won't take us an infinite amount of time to kind of solve some of these problems. Um, and so there is quite a few tools at our disposal to deal with that. But let's go back and look at effort and flow variables one more time before we do. All that they describe is the instantaneous relationship between two variables, between force and position or uh, between voltage and current, say. But we want to not only just know the instantaneous response, but also how that response changes over time. And so we've got two terms for this. The first is the transfer function. So the transfer function is a function, a mathematical description that describes the instantaneous relationship between the input and the output variables, whatever they might be. In addition to that, we can also describe the time response of the system, which is not just how the system variables respond instantaneously, but how does that change over time? If you've ever looked at how the charge builds up on a capacitor over time, you will know that the time response of a capacitor is very different from the formula for calculating what is the voltage across a capacitor for a set amount of charge. These are typically mathematical relationships. We can always implement them in code. Uh, but here's a, here's a simple example. This is an example of a proportional relationship. And you can see it in the graph on the right hand side there. So I'm saying that Y is proportional to X. How is it proportional? It's proportional by the relationship K there, which is the gradient of that line. And so the transfer function, the definition of it, is just the ratio of output to input. So in this example, for proportionality, the transfer function is just that k value, just the slope of that line. So this is more, most commonly seen um, in, in a kind of idealized example as, as a spring. So you've hopefully all seen Hooke's law, which is just this f equals kx. If you haven't seen it before, it's just saying that the force exerted by a spring depends only on the spring constant, k, which is a measure of the springiness of the spring, and x, which is how far that spring is extended. If the spring's not extended, then there's no force applied. Uh, and if the, the more the spring is extended, the more this, the more force is um, generated. This relationship, um, this one here is a specific relationship because we've got K, we've got a specific constant of proportionality and we have an equal sign. But we can also write this generally and say that if the force on the spring is proportional to X, the extension of the spring, with K being a constant of proportionality. And the purpose of this part of the course is really to get you to think about how we can describe systems uh, by general expressions like this, and then how do we convert them into specific equations like that. Um, proportional relationships are pretty common, uh, but they also suffer from one thing, and it's, it's pretty obvious if you think about it, is that real world springs aren't actually perfectly proportional because they do things like this. If you put too much force on a spring, it will actually break because springs are made out of real world material and they'll have shear forces on them. And if you stretch them too much, the string will just break and it will probably never go back to its previous point. Um, similarly, if you compress a spring, there's usually a distance at which you cannot compress it anymore because you start squashing it entirely out of shape. So with all of these, we have to remember we are making simplifications. We're always assuming we're acting in this straight line region here, this region of linearity. But we can still do that we can still talk about these different relationships. So if I was to ask you, what is the transfer function of a spring? Remember the definition of our transfer function, which is called G, by the way, in engineering terminology, G is the term for the transfer function. It's just the ratio of output to input. So in this case, if our output is the force on the spring and X is our input, so extending the spring is our input, the constant of proportionality is just K. Why? Because we just rearranged this equation from a couple of slides ago. We re rearranged this equation here to get that value. Um, so here's uh, what an example question might look like in, uh, in a 
and a, and a test based based on this. So this one says uh, a home brewer has a temperature of fermentation liquid. He figures it out as relationship to the current amount of sugar in the vat. Um, and there's a few other things that are important, whether it's stirred, whether there's hops, and whether there's yeast. So the question is, for a given constant number of hops, he has observed, or she has observed, that the fermentation liquid temperature is proportional to S. Determine the general equation, and then the specific equation relating temperature to sugar. So this is actually not too hard. Essentially, what we're trying to do is turn that from a um, written description into a mathematical relationship. So first we know that T of F is proportional to S. So what is the effort and what is the flow? Well, what we assume in the system is that the amount of sugar in the vat is driving the fermentation temperature. So sugar, S, is the effort, and TF, the, the fermentation temperature, is the flow variable. And so all that means is that the general form is TF is proportional to S. And if we want to turn that from a general to a specific form, all we'd go is TF is equal to KS where k is our constant of proportionality. Sorry, a little bit hard to see there. So why did I use k and not h here? Um, I could have used h, but the reason that I used k is k is a general uh, is a general solution. It is correct. I can go and find out experimentally what that k value is. Now it may be that it is entirely dependent on the constant number of hops and nothing else. But I don't know that off the top of my head, despite the fact that I brew a little bit at home. Um, and I would not like to oversimplify the system. So instead I give it another value saying for this region it's proportional and to the best of my knowledge um, K might depend on H, but there's nothing saying that the amount of hops is the only important factor in this situation. Uh, that's how you would write and kind of rearrange and answer these questions in a test form.